Hello, BookTube, and welcome back to your Daily Penguin. This is our waddle through my Penguin Classic wall. We are working our way down through the first bookcase, which is the only one that I really systematically organized. Uh, so we're in the Long Renaissance period. Uh, one of our signature dates was 15, 1492. Uh, but we also have Shakespeare. We have uh, 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 Ariosto. We have 1516, the date when Ariosto published, Orlando Furioso. And now we're in the early 1550s when uh, a poet was born who was a weird and, and sort of controversial figure in his day. He'd widely been regarded for centuries as a great poet, but no one reads him anymore. No one reads him for pleasure anymore, I believe. I wish I thought otherwise, but I don't. But Penguin has done right by him. Penguin did two enormous volumes of Edmund Spencer. Uh, one of them we saw... On this channel years ago, I got a battered Penguin trade paperback of his great book, The Fairy Queen. And I reinforced it on this channel. I did a sort of a DIY uh, Steve's Workshop reinforcement of this thing so that it would stand up to multiple rereadings because I think I'm the only person in the world who reads this thing for pleasure anymore, much less many times. <laughs> and a lot of you uh, sent really nice messages about that DIY video. A lot of you have found it. I don't, I don't do... Uh, sort of book reinforcement videos anymore. When I did, I did a handful of them, and uh, a lot of you have found those videos and say that you really like them. It was very touching. Uh, I think because I was in Steve storytelling mode every time I did one of those. I was describing in detail how you do this, how you reinforce a reading copy with, with clear plastic tape in order to make it water resistant and indestructible. It, of course, as a number of purists pointed out, totally destroys the resale value of the volume. My assumption is that, like me, you are not going to resell the volume. Uh, but while, in addition to talking about how I was doing what I was doing, I was also telling stories about the book and about the author, and apparently you like that. I, I don't know one way or another, but this is the book that uh, was supposed to secure uh, Spencer's immortality. And it did for a long time. It doesn't anymore. It's a weird book. <laughs> Very weird, but brilliant, I think. And Penguin has done a, they did a mass market, a big brick size. They, they've never edited it. They've never done, well, they have. They, I think they did a volume of a, short, a much shorter Fairy Queen of famous bits that used to be famous. Uh, but they've also always pitched in with an unabridged version. And I love that. I'm very grateful for that. And also they did this, the shorter poems, another big volume of uh, the Edmund Spencer stuff that's not the Fairy Queen, that, that's still uh, famous. So the, your penguins today are Edmund Spencer in Penguin. It's a big amount. It's a large amount. Very nice. It's very nice to have this. No, no complaints whatsoever about your penguin choice today. I just don't know how much more to say about this author because I, I, I'm very happy that Penguin has given this author the attention that I think he deserves. No matter how poorly he treated the Irish, I still think he, he greatly deserves. And I understand why. They gave him this attention because of schools. But I don't think schools assign Spencer anymore. I don't think students read him anymore. And that's the kiss of death, because if they don't, no one will. If they don't get it, if you don't get a college freshman in a, in a literature survey class, if, you don't, if that college freshman doesn't find a professor who can illuminate the key to liking, the keys to liking this author, then no one else will. Spencer intentionally chose weird and anachronistic vocabulary for his epic. He intentionally chose often obscure and obscurantist ways to go about describing his action. I don't think it slows down the poem much, but you have to get used to it. You have to, you have to concede a lot to this poet's vision. And all of the people who are perfectly willing to do that when it comes to T.S. Eliot's poetry seem not to be willing to do it here so and that no poet can survive with you know that kind of neglect so i don't imagine i, I imagine that i will live to see a time when penguin no longer publishes the fairy queen maybe they don't anymore uh but i'm i'm uh i have the big brick orange spine mass market paperback of this thing and i have this now that and every once in a while nothing more will do than for me to revisit this author uh so that is your that is your penguin classic for today it's another case where i have no idea uh how to recommend this author of course it's a recommend of course if i'm going to talk about evan spencer i'm going to recommend him but i don't know how to do that because i don't want to uh turn a reader away from him 
and he requires a little bit of preparation. If you were to pick up the shorter poems, there might be bits and pieces in here that you would like that are, that have a, a certain courtly finish to them. But if you were to pick up the Fairy Queen, knowing nothing, orienting not at all, never having experienced Spencer, I don't know how long you'd last before you'd give up. And that's a shame. Uh, I'm very glad to say, I mean, Spencer wrote in English. He, he, he wrote his work in exactly the language that we read today. So there's nothing that can be done for him. I mean, there have been attempts in the, in the, in the 20th century, there were attempts to modernize, abridge and modernize the Fairy Queen. I have a couple of those. Uh, they don't, they, the magic goes right out. You get the accessibility, but you don't get the magic anymore. Uh, but it's a very different thing than something like the Orlando Furioso, which is even longer than the Fairy Queen and in another language, but can be made totally accessible to an English language reader. Uh, the, the edition that we saw the other day is a perfect example of that. So, uh, <laughs> so Orlando Furioso, at least I can recommend. If you try those volumes, you will love them. Uh, whereas the Fairy Queen, I don't know. I don't know. I don't think you would love it if you tried it. Uh, so it's a recommend, but with a great deal of caution, unfortunately. Uh, I love Spencer. Absolutely love him. I love reading his works. I love reading about him. I love reading even critical studies of his work. I ordinarily avoid those or go into them with a clothespin on my nose because academic prose really bothers me. But some of them are, are quite good. There was one la late last year that was quite good. Uh, but... Uh, we're, I'm going to hope that our Penguin Classic tomorrow is a little more accessible. <laughs> we'll see. I haven't, I haven't scoured the shelf. I'm not, I'm intentionally not doing any planning on this thing. Because if I do a little, I know myself well enough to know I'll just keep, I'll turn it into a syllabus. I don't want to do that. So, uh, so we'll see what we have tomorrow. We'll hope for it's something a little bit less impenetrable <laughs> than the Fairy Queen of Edmund Spencer. But uh, two great Penguin volumes. So there you go. <laughs> so I'll wrap this up. Uh, but I'll be back. Thank you, Book 2.